Hello again, everyone. Good to have you with us. And uh, we're on to the first, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 11. So uh, we're just working our way through. As I've said before, we started in John. We've gone through the book of Acts, Romans, First Corinthians. Now we're most of the way through Second Corinthians and into chapter 11. <clears throat> and to give you the background, uh, Paul has been uh, talking as a whole, very gently to the whole of the uh, of the Corinthian church, the and commending them on on setting things right, uh, getting past all the factionalism that there was. But there are one or two that are still hanging on to their false concepts of who this apostle actually is. Just correct that. Correct that. So uh, yeah, thanks for for joining us, and. Um, uh, we'll just go back to chapter 11 of uh, the of chapter 10, beg your pardon, and I'll bring you in here. There we are. I'll just bring that up again, guys. Sorry. There we go. Okay, that's better. All right, so let, let's take a look at the end of chapter 10 to get our bearings. Uh, he finishes with, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Or it's not who he who recommends himself. It's so true. It's not the one who recommends, who commends himself that is approved, but whom the Lord commends. Indeed. Strive to be someone that the Lord commends, guys. Okay, so now we're into chapter 11. So let's scroll down and we'll see where we go. Now, he's addressing just the few now. The few that are still in their foolishness. And because of them, he's having to restate his own qualifications. So let's take a look. He's got concern for their faithfulness. That's the title for this section. Oh, he says that you would bear with me a little in a little folly, a little foolishness. And indeed, you do bear with me. For I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. What does that mean? He doesn't want any of them, any of them to be swallowed up by Satan's lies. He doesn't want any of them not to last the distance. He doesn't want to lose enemy, any of them to, the, to our enemy, the enemy of our souls, the devil or Satan. So that's the kind of jealousy he has. It's a godly jealousy. God is a jealous God. He doesn't want to lose any of us to Satan either. Uh, it's like a, a, a tender father that looks at his children. This is the Apostle Paul. It's also a heavenly father. And, and desires so strongly that they will grow to be just like him. Not the Apostle Paul, but just like Christ. He wants that, but he sees that the enemy has got in and wants to corrupt them. So that's what he's talking about here. I'm jealous for you with a godly jealousy. He wants them to be a pure, spotless bride of Christ. That's the body of Christ or the bride of Christ is the church. I've betrothed you to one husband. In this case, he's talking about them as the bride of Christ that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. That's, in other words, pure. But I fear, lest somehow, just as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, his cunning, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. The gospel is not hard to understand. If it was, it would be unfair on those who are not um, who can't figure it out. That would be totally unfair. No. The gospel, the simplicity, that is in Christ. For if he who comes preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit, which you had not received, or a different gospel, which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. In other words, they've got these 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 different people who come along with strange doctrines and they're paying attention to them. Doesn't necessarily mean that they're accepting it, but they're putting up with it. 
And the apostle says, you know, even if an angel of God comes and, and preaches something different, let him be accursed. Says that earlier. For I consider that I am not at all inferior to the most eminent apostles, even though I'm untrained in speech, yet I'm not in knowledge. So Paul was not a great orator, not like Apollos, who was very, very um, powerful in speech. But the apostle, he knew God in a very personal way. And he was raised, he was trained at the feet of Gamaliel, one of the, one of the, the, um, the wisest and most knowledgeable of the, uh, the Pharisees uh, back in Paul's time. No, he's not untrained in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly manifested among you in all things. This has been obvious, in other words. Did I commit sin? in humbling myself that you might be exalted because I preached the gospel of God to you free of charge. He's comparing himself with these other teachers who come along and they say, oh, let me preach and you can pay me. No, he did it free of charge. I robbed other churches. He's using irony here. <laughs> in other words, taking wages from them, here it is, to minister to you. And when I was present with you and in need, I was a burden to no one. For what I lacked, the brethren or the brothers who came from Macedonia supplied. Now, who are these Macedonians? Well, that's the church of Thessalonica, the the church also at uh, Berea. Uh, th these are Macedonian churches, they're further up north, but their region is directly in line with Achaia, which is where the Corinth church is. And in everything, I kept myself from being burdensome to you. And so I will keep myself. As the truth of Christ is in me, no one shall stop me from this boasting in the regions of Achaia, which is where he is. Where, where the Corinthian church is, where these guys are. Why? Because I do not love you? No, God knows. But what I do, I will also continue to do, that I may cut off the opportunity, here's why he does it, from those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the things of which they boast. Such are false apostles, are deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no wonder for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it's no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. These are the ones who are, are expecting financial reward for preaching to the um, Corinthians. And not correct preaching, they, they, these were leading the, the Corinthians astray with their teaching. I say again, let no one think of me a fool. If otherwise, at least receive me as a fool, that I also may boast a little. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> mm, there we go. Okay, no, sorry about that. Uh, what I speak, I speak not according to the Lord, but as it were, foolishly, in this confidence of boasting, seeing that many boast according to the flesh, in other words, in what they are and what they appear, I also will boast, for you put up with fools gladly, since you yourselves are wise. <laughs> He's just being um, sarcastic or uh, ironic, if you like. Uh, for you put up with with it, if one brings you into bondage, if one devours you, if one takes from you, if one exalts himself, if one strikes you on the face, to our shame, I say that we were too weak for that. But in whatever anyone is bold, I speak foolishly, I am bold also. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. <clears throat> Are they of the seed of Abraham? So am I. 
Are they ministers of Christ? Big as a fool. I am more. In labours or abundant. In stripes above measure. Greater place, he says. Here we are. The next verse, he tells us that. In prisons more frequently. In deaths often. From the Jews five times I received 40 strikes minus one. Stripes minus one. In other words, 39 stripes. Five times he read, received the 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Yeah, and left for dead, what's more. Three times I was shipwrecked. One of those times, he says, a night and a day of being in the deep. In other words, clinging on to what was left of the ship. In journeys often. In perils of waters. In perils of robbers. In perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. What does this perils mean? That means in danger from false brethren uh, while he was in the sea. He was in danger all, all the way here. Uh, in weariness and in toil, work, in other words, in sleeplessness often. And hunger and thirst and fastings often and cold, nakedness. Besides the other things, what comes upon me daily, my deep concern for all the churches, who is weak and I'm not weak, who is made to stumble and I don't burn with indignation. In other words, he gets, gets disturbed deeply when, when um, those who he has led to Christ fall fall into sin or are led astray. Yes, he burns with indignation, especially against these false prophets. If I must boast, I will boast in things which concern my infirmity. That's his weakness. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is blessed forever, knows I'm not lying. In Damascus, the governor under Aretas, the king, was guarding the city of the Damascenes with a garrison, desiring to arrest me. But I was let down in a basket through a window in the wall and escaped his hands. He doesn't stop here, guys. He continues on in the next chapter, which we'll get to. But uh, you can see the apostle is, is led to tell his own story, which is fine, you know. Um, but unfortunately, he, he's, he's having to to say his own story here, the so-called compete with false apostles. But in the process, he tells us the amazing things that, that has happened to him, have happened to him, and how God in all of these things uh, brought him through. Yeah, and, and he's speaking to just a small number of the Corinthians at this stage because the, the majority had got things right, recognized him as at least the apostle to them, because they came to know Christ through the apostle Paul. Well, we're going to leave it at that, guys. Um, thank you for joining me this morning. Very short one. And sorry it's taken so long. I was uh, out of action for a couple of weeks. Holidays here. And we had a week, a week of um, uh, some fasting and prayer. Great meetings. Uh, but we didn't do anything. We just spent time uh, in the presence of the Lord. So thank you for joining us um, once again. And uh, hopefully I'll get back to you tomorrow, but we'll see how we go. Uh, that was 1 Corinthians 11. And just uh, hope it's been a blessing to everyone.